Hello. Thank you very much for joining me today. How you doing? This video popped up and well, you know what it is. I'm going to react to it. Common stereotypes about Americans. I feel like I probably should know them. But nevertheless, it's always a fun subject. And let's see. It's by Infographics. The Infographics Show. The definitive Infographics Show. A small and up-and-coming YouTube channel. Let's get them to 15 million subscribers, guys. Link down below. We all love to stereotype, to believe in, or to cast forth oversimplified- I don't. I've never stereotyped anything or anyone ever in my life. ...ideas about certain groups, and in today's case, a nationality. Is it really true that all Italians are passionate lovers and equally passionate about food? Do the Brits- <laughs> Brits have stiff upper lips and bad teeth? Are Canadians simple outdoorsy types with an enthusiasm for chopping wood? Well, today we are going to look at- <laughs> Just one- Yes. Country. In this Those aren't stereotypes. Those are all just facts. Episode of the Infographic Show, Common Stereotypes About Americans. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button so that you can be part of our notification squad. The big, bold, brash American. How true is that? There is a stereotype that Americans are a big or fat nation. The stereotype is partly... <laughs> fat nation. Never. I don't know why they call them this. Fat nation. Yeah. We're all obese. True, if you believe the World Health Organization, according to 2015 data, the USA was the most obese Western nation. They really had to animate the, the bench bending. Nation in the world, but it only came 16th on the list, which included all the world's nations. The island of Nauru in the region of Micronesia came first on the list. Reports Wait, really? We're not the fattest nation? Just Americans actually exercise a lot, but with a diet of fast food, high sugar intake, and supersized portions, US citizens will have a hard time running off the extra pounds. Americans exercise a lot, but we're still that fat. Is that what I just heard? Hold on. This is kind of blowing my mind. Region of micro 16th on the list, which included all. That's crazy. 16th fattest. I, I, I thought we were number one. What the heck, guys? The world's nations. The island of Nauru in the region of Micronesia. How are these people that fat? Maybe it's like, you know, considered a good thing there. They're all trying to be. Asia came first on the list. Maybe that's where sumo wrestlers train. Reports suggest Americans actually exercise a lot, but with a diet of fast food, high sugar intake, and supersized portions, U.S. citizens will have a hard time running off the extra pounds. I feel like that's a... That actually is an interesting little depiction there because it is true. You know what I mean? A lot of people, even fat people, are trying to work off the calories. They're trying, they, they work out, they run, they stuff. You know, what I think, I think what a lot of people don't realize is that it's a lot, lot easier to not consume, you know, a thousand calories in a day, extra calories than it is to burn a thousand calories in a day. That is like a, a huge amount of exercise. Um, so it's, it's more about diet when it comes to not being fat. We might take bold and brash to sometimes mean arrogant and dismissive of other cultures. Who hasn't seen those viral video clips wherein Americans are subjected to global knowledge questions and come out looking like they know little about the world? According to the writer and habitually quoted academic no- I've seen them. In fact, I'm going to react to one of those tomorrow because those are always funny. Chomsky, the average American knows a lot more about sports than global politics. The gas station attendant who wants to use his mind isn't going to waste his time on international affairs because that's useless. He can't do anything about it, said Chomsky, stating that people use their expertise where they think it counts. He also said to be critical and disobedient went against the grain, and so most Americans just join in the debate at the trivial level and know very little about deconstructing global politics. Someone writing on Quora said the education system, the TV media, are US-centric. She also pointed out that America is large enough to travel around extensively, and foreign travel can be prohibitively expensive. The State Department said in 2016 that 64% of Americans don't even own a passport. But then you could ask, with such a large and beautiful country, do they need one? An yeah, it definitely is extremely expensive. And also, with like the work culture over here in America, I don't know how anybody freaking finds the time to travel abroad. It's like, what? Asking for more than like a week off work, even if you have, you know, the time built up, is kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess you could go to Europe for a week, but that's a long freaking flight. Another stereotype related to lack of knowledge about other countries might be that Americans watch way too much television and that sometimes those shows are a tad mind-numbing. Well, <laughs> Americans do top the list of being the most avid TV watchers in the world. According really? to a Recode article in 2016, the average American watches 4.3 hours of TV a day. Jesus. Does this count when the TV's just on? I honestly feel like a lot of people nowadays have the TV on and then they're actually just on their phone. It's like the most dystopian thing in the world. They're just like scrolling, you know. It's like the most stimulating, just have everything on in the room, just yelling at you and you're on your phone scrolling through TikTok. It's crazy what <laughs> this world has become, but yeah. But what I originally meant was like, you know, if I'm cooking or something, might have the TV on, but does that count? I guess it does. Four and a half hours. That's a long time. That is a long time. Definitely the number one activity, you know. Like when you have no plans and, you know, you're home from work. It's kind of like that's the thing to do. Cook dinner, watch TV. The older generation more so than the younger generation, who prefer spending time using other devices. It depends on what you watch on TV, but one could ask if you could equate the global ignorance stereotype with being the country that is glued to what has sometimes been called the idiot box more than anyone else. We are starting to sound quite negative now, so what about all those positive stereotypes? There's no way, that's absolutely true. Like, there's no way the TV makes you smarter, even if you're watching the news. The news is just like, that might make you even dumber. I think it does make a lot of people dumber watching the news because the news over here in America is so garbage. It really just is. And I'm talking about any channel other than maybe like CNBC, which is just like financial news. <laughs> that is like not super sensationalized. Or if you're watching like, you know, PBS. Anything else is like just trying to make you feel angry seems like stereotypes the well-known english writer stephen fry once said that after traveling around the usa for a while making a tv program one thing he most admired was the friendliness and positive outlook of americans he ex gotta love stephen fry stole what he called american optimism and that american people believed they could improve and do what they wanted to if they tried this all may boil down to what we might call the American dream and the pursuit of happiness. Are all Americans like this? A report by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime put Americans eighth on the list of most drug addicted countries, noting that the prescription painkiller epidemic is presently very worrying. Is that not like a massive problem over there in Europe? Because my God. That problem is so pervasive and large, it's hard to even fathom. It's like crazy. How did, how, what, what is going on? Who's behind this? Who's making all the money off it? North America had the highest amount of drug-related deaths of all continents in 2015, with the report stating, in the United States, nearly half a million people are estimated to have died from drug overdoses since 2000. Just how is that even remotely okay? Recently, the New York Times reported that drug overdoses in the U.S. were rising faster than ever. Perhaps American optimism is partially true, but American OxyContin addiction undermines the positive outlook stereotype. What about guns? Americans love their guns, right? According to The Telegraph in 2016, Americans do indeed have more guns per person than any other country in the world. The data tells us there are 112 points. I thought the Czech Republic had like... Well, I guess we'll six per 100 citizens, more than a gun for every person. It's true that many Americans support the. Now I gotta look it up. Maybe I'm just like completely wrong. I don't, you know, that wouldn't be too shocking. I'm not saying I think the Czech has more guns, but I thought it was at least, you know, close. And it's not. It's not even. Why did I think that about the Czech Republic? Sometimes shit just gets scrambled up in my brain. Evidently. <laughs> <laughs> 
not even remotely close. <laughs> it is what it is. Hey, you know, that's why I looked it up. So I'll, I'll never think that again. That's wild. Over double the amount per capita of, of the next country. That's because a lot of people who own guns own like 10. Like I'm not, not joking. Not everybody owns a gun, but the people who do own like 10 the right to bear arms, but it's also true that many other Americans support tighter gun control or the banning of guns altogether. A recent Pew Research poll found that 52% of Americans support stricter gun control, while only 18% wanted less strict control. A Gallup wow. poll in 2016 said that 76% of Americans said handguns should not be banned for all people, not including authorities, but 23% said they should. Another stereotype is that Americans are loud and sometimes rude. An op-ed in the Huffington Post seems to Not including authorities. I don't know why I thought that was funny. Of course the authorities need guns. They're the authorities. Be banned for all people, not including authorities, but 23% said they should. Another stereotype is that Americans are loud and sometimes rude. An op-ed in the... Sometimes rude? Oh my gosh. I don't believe it. Can't everybody be sometimes rude? I think that that is particularly... Like, that's what, that's what they mean, like, rude because we're loud. Not so much rude, like, in what we say, I, I think. I mean, a lot of people say Americans are friendly, but they're rude because they're loud and obnoxious. Um, I have also heard people say Americans are just, you know, rude, so I don't know. Huffington Post seems to agree with this assertion. Awareness of how personal actions impact others seems to be a weak point for Americans in general, said the writer. This translates to the perceived ignorant persona Americans abroad present, she added. There are many reasons put forward as to why this is, especially when abroad, but the main one is that instilled in Americans is not only a positive outlook, but also self-importance. People think they should be heard, and this also goes back to embracing freedom of speech and saying what the hell you want to say, goddammit. This has sometimes been taken as rude in a situation where an American will complain about the service or food in a restaurant. Ah. I heard something similar to this the other day, and I couldn't believe it. I mean, that is so embarrassing. My God. I'm trying to think. How many times have I complained in a rest restaurant? Never. Never where I'm, like, actually being... You know, if they get the food wrong in the nicest way possible, I'll inform them. Usually, or I'll just eat it. But, um, this is cringe. But perhaps these people only think they are enjoying their right to do that. In Japan, there's a saying, hit the nail that sticks out. While in America, it might be more applicable to say, be sure to make good use of your protuberance. This also... <laughs> What is protuberance? I mean, really, who's ever said that word? A body part that bulges or protrudes outwards from a surface? Also might align with the stereotype of American patriotism. When British students asked American students questions about stereotypes, one Brit kid asked why Americans were so patriotic. Some American students didn't deny it and gave good answers. One student said, We are We are a major melting pot country. Rather than history or a common language that unites us, we are united by freedom, which is what it means to be American. It is, however, possibly a weak stereotype, as another student said he wasn't patriotic at all. That's, yes, that is, there's so much truth there. You know what I mean? That's like the two American mindsets right there. You either are patriotic or you hate America. You're either freedom-loving American or you think America is like the root of all evil in the world. And another called patriotism mere mob mentality. A Gallup poll said that in 2016, only 53% of Americans said they felt extremely proud to be American. This compares to 70% who said yes to that question in 2003. Wow! I've never actually seen a study confirming what I have been saying for forever, which is that that patriotism, you know, 
just in my lifetime has been falling off and that it's become much more, you know, what's the word, like in vogue, <laughs> in style to not be patriotic. Three, it said the younger generation was the cause of this huge change, which mirrors the mob mentality students believe. Sometimes you'll notice in Europe there's a certain snootiness that Americans are not cultured. This to some extent could be true as the United States is relatively new and so we can't really credit the country for a renaissance of culture. But hold on, what about the great- I don't know why, but that one does get under my skin. Like not cultured. I couldn't imagine someone, mostly just cause it's like, I don't care. I do not care about if you think I'm cultured. Sorry. Like, it's just, I, I, for some reason, that grinds my gears. Because I've seen that a million times. You know, you're not cultured. Oh, there's no culture in America. I don't care. <laughs> like, why do you think I care? Sorry. I just had to, had to rant about that been building up inside me <laughs> and that uh, of course shows that I do care but the thing I care about is that I I don't care like I need people to recognize I don't care if you think I'm cultured or not please stop acting like that's some serious insult it's not I don't care I'm myself I don't need a culture or, or whatever <laughs> I think that's perfectly okay. Transcendentalist movement of the 19th century with its poets and philosophers that is making a comeback today against hyper-consumerist values. This later led to the free-spirited beat generation and the books of Jack Kerouac. In music, America gave us the blues, originating from African Americans in the Mississippi Delta. And then of course there's the flip side of it, which is that, like this guy is saying, I think there is a lot of culture that's come out of America. I just don't care to even argue that. I'm like, I don't care. It gave us New Orleans jazz. It gave us, to a large extent, the hippie 60s and the American Kool-Aid acid test. In New York in the 70s, we got disco, and following that came the hip-hop movement. Throughout those years, writers vied to write the great American novels. Some of them, such as Joseph Heller, Philip Roth, and Toni Morrison, wrote literary masterpieces that will go down as books that change the world. Can we really say that Americans are uncultured? So, what do you think of these American stereotypes? Can you name a few that we left out? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called American Behavior. I've also heard that about just white people in general, you know, no culture. There's something about that that just, I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> Why does that trigger me? Actually, one of, one of the reasons is because there was a viral video that showed my face about white people have no culture and it wasn't from um like this youtube channel or any of my these youtube channels it was from something a long time ago that i made and so i guess you know that probably explained that that i saw that had like a hundred million views so that's where it all began you know what i mean i feel like i'm talking to my therapist that's where it all began for me about people saying i didn't have any culture Me, hi, I'm from Texas. Everyone, you a cowboy? Cowboys are cool. So, you know, no harm in that stereotype. Now let's talk about positive stereotypes 30 seconds later. 500,000 Americans have died from drug overdoses. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. 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 That was actually really good. That was really good. Go check them out. Link down below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.